Greetings and salutations, people of Earth. My name is Josh, and this is the Loot Bam channel. Today, we're going to be answering the question if I want to start an online business, where do I find things to sell? Let's go. In order to have a business, you have to have something to sell, something to provide, a service, what have you, to a buyer. If you don't, you have, don't have a business. That's that simple. But there are ways that we get those things. If it's not a service that you're providing, there are ways in which you can find these things that people want. We call this sourcing. So you find a source to acquire the products that somebody wants. Now there are a lot of ways to source products. If you're gonna sell new products, you might become what's called an authorized dealer, which means you and your business form a relationship with another company. You then are their representatives in a given area for distribution. You sell the products on to consumers, you handle service, uh, customer service, maybe returns, etc. Um, and then you get to, to sell to buy things at the factory cost and sell them at a retail price, leaving you a margin in between. This also requires you to have probably some certifications, some education on the product itself, uh, as you are then the brand ambassador. Some of the difficulties of being an authorized dealer is that it's not as simple as just signing your name somewhere and having them ship you stuff. Uh, oftentimes there are minimum order requirements, there are certifications that you'll have to require, there are trainings in, in schools even uh, that you have to do before actually becoming a brand representative authorized dealer. When I was in audio video sales, we had to be certified on certain products, have a significant education on the products that we were selling. Uh, so that we could field questions. Um, and that makes you a better salesman in general, but these brands require it. Uh, sometimes there are uh, order minimums, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One of the problems that we faced as authorized dealers in the audio video world was fairly thin margins. Uh, we were having a good day if we got 15% margin on a sale. We would often have to make that up in the services where we make a lot higher margins. And the margins are even thinner when you're a big box store like uh, Guitar Center or Sweetwater where you might only be getting 5% but you're making it up with volume. Now there are other ways to sell new products that don't require you to be an authorized dealer. Uh, one of those ways is to buy wholesale pallets, liquidations, returns, etc. Uh, there are lots of companies, a quick Google search will bring you a long list that are trying to sell Amazon returns or Walmart returns, Target, etc, etc. And this can give you access to new tags, brand new items, but you don't have to be a, an authorized dealer of any particular brand. Now one of the difficulties in buying pallets and return pallets and stuff like that is that you don't know the condition. Uh, they were probably returned for a reason. If it's from a liquidation, they're being liquidated for a reason because someone didn't want to pay for them in the first place. Uh, so the margins are better. You, could, you have a little bit more give on margins, but you're taking a little bit more risk. Now there are plenty of businesses that, that use this model and do it fantastically and it works for them, and but more power too. Now there is another model that has lower barriers of entry to sell new products. And it's similar to being an authorized dealer, though I would say it's not quite the same, and that's called drop shipping. You've probably heard it before on ads on YouTube and all over the internet, how much money you can make with drop shipping and blah, 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 and you just sit back and relax, and yeah, okay, that there's possibilities there. But the way it works is you find a company, typically some cheap Chinese manufacturer that will manufacture something that is a generic item like a back scratcher and you the drop shipper are responsible for advertising that means you go on facebook create the advertising and you drive traffic to their website or a website that they set up for you like on shopify and they order the product from the company the company then is responsible for shipping you're just responsible for driving traffic now if you thought that being an authorized dealer was a low margin endeavor, dropshipping is worse. And it can be way more risky in that 
you are spending all this advertising money to drive traffic to a company's website and to drive sales that may a never ha may never happen uh, and B, you may be getting, when it does happen, very few percentage points of profit. I do not recommend drop shipping to most people. If you're very, very well versed in it and you can follow the trends and you're really good at advertising, then by all means, go make your money, do what you need to do. But I've seen too many people try to get into drop shipping and not make anything and end up wasting tons of money. And guess who doesn't waste tons of money? the company producing the products that you're advertising for. So you do the math. Now if you're gonna go the pre-owned route, there's so many options here. But the first thing I would have you do is decide what kind of products are you gonna go look for. Uh, if you have a hobby, like maybe racing RC cars, or golf, or baseball cards, or what have you, figure that out and start with those things, because you're gonna be most familiar with those things. You'll recognize value quicker in those arenas than you will some random thing that you heard about on YouTube. Now once you've decided the sort of segment of the pre-owned market that you're going to go after, uh, thrift stores generally speaking are a pretty good place to start looking for product. They get millions worth of donations every year and they often can't even manage all of the donations they get. Uh, Goodwill ends up shipping things off or selling them by the pound because they get so many donations. One of the other positives of thrift stores is you go in and it's generally speaking fairly orderly. All the clothes are here, all the electronics are there, knickknacks on this shelf, all for you to search through fairly easily. Thrift stores are very good, but garage sales may be better. And here's why. Because a lot of times before people actually donate their products or their items from their house, they are going to put them on their lawn and try to sell the things that are good enough to sell. So that might mean the cream of the crop value items are already gone by the time they're donated to the thrift store. Now the volume from sourcing at garage sales is the difficulty. You have to go to lots of different yard sales typically and there's not as many products all at once. So it takes a lot more time. The margins, however, can be extraordinary. Some of my best flips have been from garage sales, buying them for two to five dollars and flipping them for hundreds. Now we live in the digital world, which means there are things for sale all the time. And you have a digital garage sale at your fingertips at any given moment. Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist offer amazing deals uh, that most people don't even realize. My biggest flips all time are all from Facebook Marketplace. And what's great about Facebook Marketplace is that, in a sense, the sellers of these products are coming to me. I can just scroll through them while I'm on my bed, on the couch, and I can find things that I recognize with value. Now, what's also great about it is that there's no fees. You can do negotiating on the Messenger app or something like that, or via email, and not have to spend the time, go find it and you know examine it. You can do that once you've decided to pick it up. I'm often shocked at how little people actually try to source from Facebook Marketplace. Um, admittedly, you'll, you might go dry for a few weeks because nobody's putting up anything of value or the things that they're putting up with va of value, they recognize the value and they're putting it up at eBay prices. You don't know, but I'm telling you from my experience, people don't understand what they have and they'll sell it for dirt cheap. You just have to keep looking. Now the distant cousin to the thrift store and the garage sale and all that stuff is the flea market. Yes, flea markets are fantastic places to source. You may not be buying lots of quantity, but oftentimes you can find something with fairly high quality. People are bringing their stuff there to sell and that means they want money for it. They may recognize some value, but if they don't understand the value, um, you have the opportunity of coming in and buying at a lower price that you can take to another market that has the buyers for it to sell it at a higher price. Now flea markets aren't necessarily always a gold mine because people are there to sell things. So they are probably done some research into knowing the price and the value of something. But there are many times where you can find good value stuff and flip it online. Now this last one caught me by surprise. I didn't even think of doing it until about last year, year and a half ago, when another eBay buddy of mine mentioned it. And that is sourcing from eBay. To sell on eBay? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Surprisingly, just like on Facebook Marketplace, people put things up on eBay way below their market value, but they don't realize it. 
or they don't believe that it could you know command a higher price and that's where you can come in buy it and then flip it on now another trick that I've used when buying on eBay is there's a lot of people especially a little bit of the old timers that are still religiously devoted to auctions and auctions in my experience are mostly dead except for those crazy rare pieces um, and high value pieces that are going to command lots of demand so what I'll see is that somebody will put up a pair of Prada shoes for 99 cents expecting lots of buyers to come in um, and that may be true it may happen but oftentimes I see these things end at four or five dollars because nobody paid enough attention to them um, and that's partly because of I think the way eBay has done promoted listings and promoted listings are getting ranked higher and you cannot promote an auction so a lot of these auctions are ending at low prices probably leaving the, the sellers pretty bummed but you as a buyer could potentially get it take it make sure that it's uh, good and clean relist it a few days later as a buy it now for ninety dollars and make plenty of profit now of course there are many other channels in which you can source from these are just the ones that i've been using most recently and most profitably but with that that's going to be it for us today thank you guys so much for watching please remember to like comment subscribe at the notification bell if you are on your journey and you want to keep up with what we are doing and the things that we are learning we hope you guys are out there making money and we'll see you on the next one peace